Hello everyone, this is Huyen, Huyen Wu with Laser Components USA. I'd like to say a few words about Laser Induced Damage Thresholds, LIDT for uh, laser optics today. This topic of LIDT is very, very important in our laser business or laser industry because nowadays laser power and energy is going up as we speak. This topic is also very complex too. There's no surprise that uh, smart people are meeting every year for 30 years at the SPI or SPIE uh, laser damage conference in Boulder to present and uh, discuss the latest findings in this uh, industry. So why is that so complex? It's so complex because you have so many variables that play a role to how to determine and measure and test the laser damage of optics. In order to give you a few uh, hints or advices or points where to look at or what to uh, look for when you determine or look for uh, laser optics, I'd like to give you a few examples. What's important to select uh, an optic or laser optic? You need to know the wavelength, obviously, what laser is used. Is it a continuous wave or a pulse laser? If it's a pulse, pulse laser, what's the pulse repetition rate? What's the peak power? What's the, uh, the pulse length? After that, you need to know what's the beam size of a laser, uh, is it polarized or not, and, uh, 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 and the angle of incidence. So I could go on for a few minutes with these variables, and that's why it's so complex to determine the laser damage. The other thing is, you might find uh, values for LIDT out there coming from vendors like, like, our, like us, Laser Components USA, but from, from other laser optics vendors as well. Um, and you're looking at a value like five joule per square centimeters or 10 joule per square centimeters. The question is, what does it mean? The thing is that everyone tests and measures these uh, values differently. For example, how did they measure the uh, laser damage in terms of shots? Was it a so-called one-on-one -on -one shot where you shoot one time on the optics and you look at the optics, was there damage or not? If there's no damage, you increase the power and you shoot again until you see a, a damage. Or is it a um, so-called S-on-1 test where you shoot multiple shots at one spot and you move to the next spot? This is how we do it at Laser Components. We shoot a thousand times on one spot, move to the next spot, shoot a thousand times again, move to the next spot, and we do that 10 times. If no damage occurs, we increase the power and do the same thing again. We repeat that cycle until we see discoloring in the coating. That's the next point that is different to many other uh, vendors or people, companies measuring um, laser damage. When does damage occur? Is it the discoloring in the coating or is it the scattering of the laser beam? We do it uh, by saying we see discoloring in the coating, so that's damage. That occurs before scattering. So it's a more conservative take on, on the laser damage. So as you can see, this, these are just two examples to illustrate how different people and companies approaching the topic of uh, laser damage or laser damage thresholds. And that's why it's so complex um, to speak about it. So my advice at this point is when you're looking for uh, uh, laser optics in general and you, you try to find the right optics for your application and for your setup, try to give as much information about your application, about your laser, about the optics you actually want to use, substrate material for example, to the vendor and the vendor can either search and find the right optics for you if it's not there yet or as we do it at Laser Components we design a coding or an optics specifically to your needs. You know where to find me, Huyen Vu, Laser Components USA. Thank you very much.